Hi, this is Kevin Deal, and today we're going to talk about the Prima Luna Evo 300 integrated amp. I'm so excited to talk about this. This is going to be an in-depth video, and I'm really going to break it down. I'm going to show you the insides of this and show you why it is so amazing. But before we go there, i got to say something. I read the comments on the Evo 400 uh, video that I did, and somebody said, yeah, I know that you hate uh, blah, 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 brand. And I go, wait a minute. No, I don't hate that. I don't hate anything. If you own another product, you should be proud of it. You know, I have friends that work there for that matter. So I certainly don't hate it. And we have dealers that sell both brands. The only thing I hate is if people say I'm not spending, you know, $9,000 on an integrated amp so I can't get world class. And that is absolutely not true. You need to be smart about what you spend your money on. You need to look inside and you don't have to be an electronic engineer to figure it out. That is true, and that's why I want to take you inside and show you what makes this so special. So what is the evolution? That's just what it is. The old model, the Dialog Premium, was one of the greatest integrated amps in the history of Hi-Fi. Stereoval Class A rated, I mean, considered by most people to be the best of the best. But they, had, they saw some things that could be improved. So this is a refinement in a number of different areas. So if you own that product, be happy with it. You don't have to get rid of it. Prima Luna has never been that way. Some companies come out with a new model and they somehow make you feel that what you have now is not any good anymore. And that's not true. If you have a Dialog Premium, cherish it and love it because you got something that's really worth owning. But this is a an amazing product. And the thing is they didn't even, listen, for nine years, Prima Luna didn't raise the price. And that was because of the work that Herman van den Dungen did in controlling that. And the work that I did over here, we all worked to make sure that you get something for your money. And that is a fact because cost indeed did go up. So this new model went up just a little bit in price, just enough to cover inflation, yet you get so much more in the box. So this is a 36 watt per channel amp running EL34s. Now why is it that low power is a good thing for you? First off, you don't want to get a high power tube amp because all of these amplifiers have to use the same math. If you've got 100 watts per channel out of a pair of tubes, there's only one way to achieve it. That's by running voltages higher and biasing the tubes harder. And manufacturers don't want to tell you what those numbers are. They'll always say, no, that's a trade secret. It's not a trade secret. It's like EPA ratings for your car, right? If you were buying a car and it got two miles to the gallon, you may not want to buy it. It's the same thing here. Prima Luna is very proud to tell you that they run 417 volts to the plates. That's it, and then they bias these tubes at about 35 mils. Easy breezy, they run the tubes at the minimum voltages without going over into crossover distortion. So you get the best measurements, the lowest distortion, but extended tube life, and you don't have shorts happening. The more you raise plate voltage, screen voltage, the more problems you have. People say, oh man, I want to have a tube amp so bad, but I've heard that they're a hassle. And they are not a hassle. If you buy the wrong one, it's a hassle, but this one will not be. So you can run any tube in this you want. It comes with the L34s, and if you ask any hardcore tube head, say to them, ask them, what's the most musical tube? They're going to say EL34s. But if you don't want to run EL34s and if you want to have some fun, you can run KT120s. It only dissipates, it only gives you 42 watts per channel with a pair of KT120s, or 48 watts with a pair of KT150s. But the thing is, if you put 120s or 150s in this, in this amp, I'm going to tell you, those tubes might outlive you. Because I'm running 150s in my Prima Luna at home, and not because it sounds better, I think it's just because I own this place, right? And that's the fact. And I've had them in there for, I think, four years now. I run the bejesus out of it, and they test it 90% of new. That's what I'm talking about. Get an amp that runs cool. True to the way that Prima Lunas are made, this amplifier is done with point-to-point -point wiring in the signal path, and that's really important. Going up from the Evo 200 to the 300, you get Swiss-made, silver-plated, oxygen-free copper with a Teflon dielectric. 
You're also going to get upgraded resistors. These pink resistors in critical positions, those are Tacman resistors. They're truly a custom-made resistor, made to order, and they're known for their low noise and linearity. Look at the tube sockets. They're all on these panels, and I want you to show a close-up of this because you got to know something. Don't mount tubes to a PCB, at least big power tubes, because when you go to remove those tubes, it puts a lot of stress on the sockets, right? And if the sockets are hot and the printed circuit board is hot, you stand a chance of cracking the board. And we'll show you a picture right here. This is a repaired printed circuit board. They end up having to put band-aids, actually traces across with pieces of wire to fix the problem. The other problem with PCBs is many times they don't lay down that much copper to give you a really, really good, a really good strong signal path. So Prima Lunas are all point-to-point -point wiring in the signal path. And you're gonna look at those tube sockets. They're ceramic and they're on these bolted on chimneys that have big ventilation holes so the, the heat can escape from the amplifier. Right here, you're gonna see the adaptive auto bias board. And that is Prima Luna's secret sauce. Go watch my video about auto bias and about adaptive auto bias. Most amplifiers on the market today are fake that claim auto bias are not. They are what's called cathode bias. And cathode bias amps oftentimes run in class A, and that is never good for you because by definition that means a short tube life. Cathode bias works great, but a third of the power goes up in heat. So they run the bejesus out of tubes to overcome that, and you can feel it when you put your hands on the amp. So they're going to be low power, the tubes are running hard. I mean, you don't have to bias the amp, but big deal, I'd rather have manual bias. But Prima Luna got away from all of that way back in 2003. This board looks at each tube in real time and says, how are you doing? How are you? Each tube is kept in its perfect linear position. And what's important about that is, is the way it makes it sound. It cuts distortion by over 50%. And it's most important when tubes get old and they start getting soft because these tubes are not going to age evenly. But adaptive auto bias is going to help ensure that you never hear the problems. It also is super, super effective as you turn the music up and you're approaching clipping. The louder you play the music, the more important adaptive auto bias is. But it does a lot more than that. On some amplifiers, you're going to see that they don't have any plate fuses. And what that means is this. One of these days, you're going to have a tube short. And on that amp that has no plate fuse, you're going to break the amp. You're going to take out a cathode resistor or a screen resistor. So you have to get a soldering iron out. And if you don't know how to solder and if you don't know how to replace parts, you're going to take it to a shop. Or worst case, you're going to have to send it to the, go to the FedEx station with it, right? Who needs that? Prima Luna has a better answer. If there is a tube short in a Prima Luna, there's a relay that opens up on the adaptive auto bias board. It instantly cuts off the plate voltage to protect all the parts inside. There's a little red light right in front of the bad tube. It's going to tell you which tube is the problem. You simply pull the tube out, plug another one in. It doesn't even have to be the right tube. Adaptive auto bias is so advanced, I can run four different tubes in this amp. I can run a KT150, a 120, an 88, and an EL34, and you'd never know I was doing the wrong thing. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I like engineering. Look at these big niche con capacitors. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That keeps the power supply quiet. It keeps the power... This is a beefy power supply. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Manufacturers like to cheap out on transformers, and there's a reason. They are the single most expensive component in any tube amplifier. That's why many tube preamps don't weigh anything. They weigh like 15 pounds, right? And you look in the box and there's nothing in there because you can cheat in a preamp. You can make a preamp for $1,500 with a little power, and it'll be just as good as these ones that they sell for eight grand, and I'm not kidding you. In a power amplifier, it's harder to cheat. In a tube amp, you need a big power transformer, and Prima Luna power transformers are toroids. 
And the reason that they use toroids is they don't radiate EMI outside of the core of the donut. You've seen toroids before, right? But manufacturers don't like to put them in amplifiers. And do you know why that is? Because of money. Toroids cost four or five times more than regular transformers cost, and they have to be larger physically. So that requires more windings, and that means more expense. But it's the gold standard, but Prima Luna did a lot more. This transformer is placed into a non-microphonic resin. It's sealed. They call it a potted transformer. There's two reasons for that. Number one, you want to protect it from the elements. It's a very expensive part. Number two, you want to help keep it quiet. So they pot it and then they place it into a metallic shield made of something called mu metal. And the beauty of mu metal is, again, it acts as a shield so nothing gets into the sensitive uh, front end circuitry. Don't try to power your way to good sound. That's not how things work. This is all about dropping the noise level and making everything quiet. And tubes can be incredibly quiet if you pay attention to the details. So what else did they do? They invented the AC offset killer. Prima Luna invented that, their parent company invented that circuit decades ago. I used to sell it as a separate box. And what it's charged with is keeping the transformer from humming under certain electrical conditions. There's companies that sell this exact same thing for $399, but in the Evo 300 and Evo 400, it's included. And again, we're just talking about little details to drop the noise. What else makes this amp quiet? The way that they select the inputs. See all these blue boxes in the back? Those are Japanese relays. They're hermetically sealed relays made by a division of Fujitsu in Japan. They're guaranteed for 50,000 openings and closings. So instead of a selector switch, think about the TV set that you had when you were a kid, right? Your dad had to get tuner cleaner and then sometimes you'd see two different channels come in and that's because there's always bleeding over from the other inputs. They never turn off the other inputs completely. So products that have regular selector switches People that live in San Francisco and New York where it's really tightly packed and you've got a bunch of radio stations, literally they will sometimes pick up radio through unused inputs. But in a Prima Luna it works different. There's a controller board right up here in the front of the amp and it opens and closes and handles all of the logic functions. Opens and closes these relays that are mounted in the back. The relays are right where the inputs are. That gives you a short signal path. So short it's non-existent instead of wires traipsing back and forth to the front. Now because you're using relays, you select auxiliary one as an example. That relay closes, boom. It gives you the best contact possible with the shortest distance. All the other relays are left open. So even if you picked up a radio station at that RCA jack, it's not gonna feed through. Now you can never cut out everything in the world. You can't because there's things that just float around us, router noise and all of that, and you've probably had problems with that. Prima Luna is doing everything they can to make sure that you don't hear it. Something else that they did that they don't even talk about, but I will, underneath each one of these relays, there's a little circuit that presents a perfect 100,000 ohm impedance to your source components. Why do they do that? Because if you have a tube phono stage or a tube DAC or other tube components going in, they like to see a nice stiff input impedance. And I'm going to tell you, it only costs Primal and maybe 50 cents per input to do that, I'll bet, maybe a buck. But these manufacturers, they fine tune the build quality down to the penny. They don't want to spend a dollar on each input because it's about the money. And that's not what it's about with Prima Luna. You know, when they raised the price on this product, they didn't make it cheaper like so many other companies do. They beef things up. The power supply is bigger and improved on this model. The headphone circuit. The, old, the outgoing model did not have a headphone app. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. Headphones are speakers, they're just little speakers. So in so many products that have a headphone jack, the way that they achieve it is with a little op amp. You can do it for two bucks and it'll sound fine. And most people would never even know. But what Prima Luna did was different. This controller board I told you about in the front, 
It opens and closes, relays in the back. The relays are open when you're listening to speakers. You flip a switch on the side and now the signal's diverted from the speaker taps, the relay closes, and it sends the signal to a voltage divider network that lowers the power to an appropriate level for earphones. What's cool about that? Now you've got a world-class headphone amp. And I'm telling you, if you've never heard a tube headphone amp, it's something that is really, really amazing. If you've never been into headphones, it could turn you into a fan. And people buy these and never even hook up speakers to them. Why is that? Because it's a unique product. I failed to tell you, and I'm going to tell you right now. This amp, almost every tube amp made today is what's called an ultralinear design or some twist of ultralinear. And the reason for that is it's the most modern amplifier design. Prior to that, state of the art was push-pull triode. This is the only amplifier that lets you switch it from ultralinear to triode operation at the push of a button on the remote control. How cool is that? So what's triode about? Triode is a warmer presentation. I mean, at my home, I use it at night when I'm trying to kind of hunker the down house down and make it a little bit more relaxed. Uh, sometimes if I'm listening to 1970s recordings, some of those are really brash. Some of the Rolling Stones, uh, vintage Dave and Bowie, they just, I, I stopped listening to them and I didn't even know why. It's because they're so aggressive on a high resolution system. So all you gotta do is grab your remote. There's a button right here on the top, boom. If the light's green, you're in triode. If the light's red, you're in ultralinear. How cool is that? And the same thing goes for the headphone amp. So you've got two headphone amps in one amp. That's really cool. Now, they also beefed up the headphone circuitry on all the new Evolution products. They're using larger resistors now for some of the more difficult headphones. And um, I gotta mention something to you. If you buy one of these and you switch it to headphones, don't go turning the volume up without a load on it, okay? Make sure that there's headphones plugged in. That's a mistake. You don't want to do that. Just like a tube amp, you always want to make sure that you have speakers hooked up to it if you're turning up the power and giving it a signal, okay? What else did they do on this? Um, they added a tape monitor out. That was not on the outgoing model. We found out that some people wanted to have that uh, because they want to be able to make recordings of some of their other, other inputs. Um, they changed the subwoofer out uh, scheme and this is what they've done. The outgoing model had a mono sub out and that's cool for most everybody. Now it's really a preamp out and it's a stereo preamp out. So if you're running stereo subs or if you want to buy Amplify, you can do so. But if you're only running one subwoofer, flip a switch, and now it's a mono out. How cool is that? Also, I failed to mention in the last video, home theater bypass. A lot of people love to use Prima Lunas in their home theaters because the tubes last so long, you can do it in a system where the TV is running a lot. So, the Prima Luna Evo 300, 400, and 200 have home theater bypass. So what that means is this. If you have a surround sound processor, plug that into HTN, when you flip it to home theater, what's gonna happen is this is no longer considered to be an integrated amplifier. It is now a power amp, and the volume control is controlled by your sur uh, surround processor. Also, they added a couple of doomsday fuses. Uh, the new adaptive auto bias board has been beefed up with a bigger relay, but we found that we had a customer that liked to drink a little too much, and one night he told me that he had tripped over his amp and broke a bunch of tubes. And so Herman has a tendency to overdo things. He said, we need more safety, we need more safety. So they added doomsday fuses to the side just in case somebody gets a little bit out of control. I mean, but how cool is that, right? Some companies won't spend money on even one plate fuse, but Prima Luna gives you all these layers of protection. It's all about getting these out into your hands and letting you have fun and use it every day and not have to worry about it. So it's got a 4-ohm tap and an 8-ohm tap. i got to say something to you. Don't read your speakers and say, oh, my speaker says it's an 8-ohm speaker, so I better plug it into 8-ohms. 
Read the manual. It tells you. Use the tap that sounds right because 8 ohm speakers are never 8 ohms. The impedance curve goes all over the place. So you want to try it at the same level with the same piece of music. Try it on one tap, then try it on the other and use the one that sounds best. Look, oh, and one more thing. I got to say something here because I just had somebody bring me a, another product that was done in like a flat black and flat silver finish. And I looked under the paint, I looked at the paint and I saw that the reason they used a flat finish was because there was all these grind marks in the metal work, right? I mean, it's just really super poor quality. This has five coats of hand rub finish and it's a mirror finish. I mean, it's an automotive finish. And people don't do that because it requires that the metal work be done right, but Prima Luna always does that. I mean, look at this cage. It has glass panels on the side. It uses 61287s in the front end. Do you know why that is? Did you notice that some companies are getting rid of and they're going down to just two tubes in the front end? You know why? Because they can replace two tubes with an FET. The FET costs $2. To add two tubes, it's going to cost maybe... 20 bucks. This is high-end audio. You'd think they'd spend that, but they don't. So these two tubes in the front are preamp tubes. That's where the rubber meets the road. These are driver tubes that flank it. There's four driver tubes. Why? To swing more voltage. Just a little bit more dynamic pop. Oh, and the volume control. This is an Alps Blue Velvet potentiometer made in Japan. That's the thing. They don't want to use chips. They could use chips and get that done for $2.50. That's about a $50 part. And then it's controlled by that controller board in this beautiful, beautiful remote that has neoprene rubber rings on each side and it's all machined metal. One more thing, I forgot to talk about the capacitors. Okay, these new capacitors that are in critical places in the Evo 300s and 400s, they are amazing. Herman found a factory in Europe I can't say who they are. They don't produce for anybody in the audio industry. He had heard they make the best tin foils. Tin foils sound incredible, but tin foils can be a little bit more fragile. So he went to this company and they refused to make for anyone. I don't know how he worked it out, but he did because he cares enough to get you something that's going to sound amazing. Tin foils are expensive. You're not going to find them in these other products but they sound the best. And now we've got the best built ones that will last. Also, I wanna say something else. Bass response is not gonna be from power. Bass response is from the output transformers, purely in a tube amp. You can have 100 watts per channel. If the output transformers will not communicate that to the speakers, you're not gonna get bottom end. Prima Luna is famous for their output transformers. Go read all the reviews. Look at all the products from day one, and what do they talk about? The bottom end. That's because they're designed in-house and wound in-house by the best engineers in the world. Buy a Prima Luna, buy something, get a tube amp. It's going to be something that's going to inspire you, that re-engage you in music that you seem to have forgotten about. Thanks for listening.